All right, guys, Lord wanted me to touch much deeper on this topic because this is very important and it will help many of you with the information you allow into your life. Now I'm going to open up scripture first really quick and I'm going to show you the scripture that God placed on my spirit right now to share with you and how this involves and works into this topic that we're going to discuss right now. I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I'll read that again. And bringing into captivity every thought, not some thoughts, not this thought, but not that thought. Every thought should be filtered into your mind or removed from your mind. Into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled so through that scripture alone I'm sure you can imagine now what this video is going to be about your mind this video is about your mind and how the enemy wants the most powerful weapon that we have outside of Christ in our life because Christ is the most powerful thing that we have when we become born again but before Christ and with Christ, our mind is what the enemy wants. Now, you may ask, why? Because we know, as scripture says, that our heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? It's deceitful. So if your heart is deceiving, your mind sends a message to your heart and tells your heart what you want to do or the opposite your heart tells your mind what you like what you want and then your mind takes the action so when you're watching TV movies watching the news reading magazines um, uh, reading books at the library school textbooks all of this stuff is mind control why because it controls your mind it is information that you would not receive unless you went and gathered that information think of your mind as a file a folder I mean your mind is a folder like on a computer you know how you have a folder and you put a file into that folder and it stores that information so you have to understand that your mind is a folder and the enemy wants to place all these files, these toxic files that have viruses attached to them into this folder. Now, whatever you allow yourself to see, listen to music, the bad sinful lyrics that you listen to, if you allow yourself to see these things, hear these things, accept these things as entertainment, as fake, but it's okay, you're still gonna watch, as sinful but it's okay it's just the beat you're listening to then you are storing all these files into your folder and this is the enemy brainwashing you conditioning your mind and normalizing sin into your mind as not sin as okay as acceptable as what the world does as what is normal and this as what guys do what women do and this is not the mindset that we are to have. God says, focus on things above, things of heaven that are pure, that are holy, that are righteous, and most importantly, that are biblical. So this way, if you're feeding your mind things of God, then when things of sin come in, 
your mind says, no, this is not holy, this is not righteous, this is not pure, I'm going to reject this from being entered into this file, from being placed into this file, from allowing it to go into this file, and I'm going to reject this virus because I'm blocking it. That's what will happen to your mind, and from that you will see God move in your life in a way you never imagined. Because all you're doing is focusing on what feeds your spirit. And this is what I do. So if you see the relationship I have with God, that I'm always on fire for him, that I'm always seeking him, that I'm always serving him, that I'm always giving him all glory, that I'm always trying to do what I can to build his kingdom through Jesus in me. And if you see that, this is the answer. I filter what I allow myself to see, where I allow myself to go, who I allow myself in to be friends with, welcome into my life, who I will reply to, who I will subscribe to, who I will listen to, who I will follow. I filter all of that because I know how dangerous it is to let the enemy in your mind. And what happened with Eve is she let the enemy in her mind. God gave her a commandment. That commandment was pure, holy, and righteous from God. It was good. As scripture says, God created heavens and earth. He created the sea, the sky, this, that, uh, the sun, the moon, and it was good. So anything of God is good. So if it becomes bad, we know the devil has his signature on it. He took what is of God, he twisted it, put his sinful twist on it and his poison and his virus, and he made it bad. So what you have to understand is he got in her mind and he said, did God really say that this will happen? I don't remember word for word. I don't care to know word for word because I don't care about the enemy. But that is what he did. He got her thinking with her mind. He made the same approach with Jesus Christ. When he was 40 days, no rest, hungry, all those 40 days fasting. He was in the desert. The devil tested him. And he said, if thou be the son of God, blah, 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 blah. See, he's getting in his mind, making him think, am I really the son of God? Is the enemy really telling me the truth? Should I really do this test? And he gets into our mind. And then from our mind, he gets into our heart, which is our emotions. And then from our emotions, he leads us through our actions. So if you're watching TV and you're watching something that is okay to watch, but then something sinful is shown to you, or something sinful is spoken about, or something sinful is revealed to you as an example, then now what was okay to watch and safe is not safe. Just like when you watch a movie when you're a kid, your parents let you watch this bad film, but when a sex scene comes, they close your eyes. They put their hand over your eyes so you don't see. So it's safe until that little, let me slide this in there scene, because they hope that it will catch you off guard. You're not expecting it, but your parents, they know this movie. They know the scenes coming. They don't just go, you know, here they are at a restaurant and boom, they're in the bed. No, it's they're getting undressed. The parents know what's next. So they're like, okay, they're getting undressed. Now they're at the uh, apartment. I need to cover my child's eyes. This is not right for their eyes. Guess what? It's not right for yours either. Because what you don't understand is the devil's deceiving you and telling you you're an adult. <laughs> you're an adult. You can watch pornography. You're an adult. You can go to the strip club. You're an adult. You can fornicate. But what God tells you is that's sinful. Go into marriage with a bed undefiled, as scripture says. Meaning, no fornication. Pure, holy, and righteous. Waiting until marriage to make love to your spouse. That's what God intended. Because then from making love, you build a family. That's also what God intended. That's why men and women are supposed to be together, not same sex. That goes against God's creation. Which then, how can you claim to be a homosexual and then claim to follow and serve the Lord and have a relationship with him? The devil is lying to you. 
If you follow Jesus, you follow his commandments. The commandment is to not be with the same sex. The commandment is to not fornicate, whether you're heterosexual or homosexual. It holds true to both. Okay, so you're already in error. So that should be a red flag wake-up call to you. And if that really matters to you, that you now know the truth, that you're living in a lie through your relationship of sin, and you truly want to serve the Lord, then guess what? You have to repent and turn from that relationship. You have to cut that person out. You have to break up with them and leave them and say, the Lord and my relationship with him is more important to me. My salvation is more important to me than the satisfaction of fornication, than the satisfaction of another uh, same-sex marriage, same-sex couples, same-sex friends with benefits. And that's what you have to understand. Because you telling yourself that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ is not biblical Jesus. Jesus said, those who love me will keep my commandments. That means you do as God's word says. It's not the Ten Commandments that he's only speaking of. It's all commandments. All that the scripture says to do and not to do. That's obedience to the Lord. So if you're not keeping the commandments, you're not in a relationship with God. That's like you saying, I love my wife, but I don't do anything she wants me to do. I don't care to do anything that she says. Then what relationship do you have? You have no relationship. So it's a two-way streak. Okay, it's it's 50-50. You got to give, God gives. It's not God gives all and you give nothing. So you have to understand that you have to repent and ask God for forgiveness and turn from that lifestyle of sin. Anyways, back to the topic. So if you watch TV, they're trying to slide these things in so that way you're already tuned into the show and at that moment you wouldn't be like okay i'm not going to watch the rest of the show because they already suckered you in they already got you tempted it's like giving you a piece of candy just letting you take a bite it's really good you want more and i'm no nope, you can't have any more i'm going to finish the rest or i'm going to throw it away and now that temptation is there like oh i need to taste more i need to know what more tastes like I need to have that whole candy bar, whatever it may be. That's what it's like. They're only giving you a taste. And they give you a taste, they get you interested in that movie, that TV show, that song, whatever it may be, and you're given that, that little nibble, that little bite, and now they've got you. Now you're waiting to get a bigger bite. And then they slide in this virus into your file. They slide in this sinful episode, uh, scene, uh, lyrics, whatever it is, in the chorus. And that's what they do. That's, that's how the devil works. He's deceiving. So, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy, as we know the scripture says. He's a lion. He's like a lion, roaming around, seeking whom he may devour. So you have to be on guard at all times. You can't just be this Christian like, oh, I'm just going to listen to this and watch this and life is grand and this and that. No, you got to be like a sniper looking out for who's about to kill you. Okay, I got eyes on this guy, but what if there's over here that this guy has eyes on me? I better look and check my surroundings and make sure I'm safe. Not just foolishly be like, hey, I know I'm coming, again, coming up against five different enemies right now and I only got eyes on one where's the other four and foolishly you're like oh, I know there's five enemies but I got my eyes on this one this one's going down and you don't even check your surroundings to make sure it's safe that's foolishness what you do is you say there's one guy okay where's the, where's the other four? Oh, there's another one all right we got two okay there's another one we got three there's one down there that's four, and there's one up there that's five. Okay, we know where all guys are now, so we don't have to worry about an attack that we're not aware of, an ambush. That's what you gotta do. I'm watching this, but up oh, this came on now. I should turn it off. I shouldn't watch it anymore. 
I'm listening to this song, but oh, I hear this now. No, this is not good. I should shut it off. I shouldn't listen, listen to it anymore. And the enemy will try to lead you to music too. He'll get in your mind and he'll give you lyrics to a sinful, lustful, secular song. And now you're hearing these lyrics and it's almost like a search hunt now to go get the rest of the lyrics, to listen to the song and fulfill this desire of curiosity that he's placing as a temptation over your mind. If you give in to that temptation, he's got you. He's giving you a bite of the candy bar. You give in to that temptation, he'll give you the whole candy bar. But guess what? That candy bar is going to make you sick. It's going to make you throw up because it's not good for you. It's toxic. But if you just take a bite and you turn away, you're not going to get sick. Because you didn't eat and consume enough. So you, you get tempted by the devil. And he's trying to put these lyrics in your mind. If you go and search up this song to fulfill this desire, this interest of what are the rest of the lyrics? Oh, I love this song. I used to listen to it before I became born again. I better go back and listen to it. Then you've just taken the enemy's bait. And you've failed. And you've opened a spiritual doorway open to him. Into your life, into your marriage, into your family, into your relationship with God. You just did that by allowing sin to enter at the door and welcome it in and say, come on in. You want to stay a while? Here's the key. That's what you're doing spiritually. So when the enemy does that, I have a better solution for you. Find a worship song. Find a worship song that is not sinful, that is not witchcraft, which is very hard to find these days. There's a lot of artists that claim to be Christian, that claim to be at a church for Christ, or have a church for Christ. Hillsong is one of them. Demonic, satanic. Bethel is another. Demonic, satanic. Um, what's the other one? Hillsong, Bethel, and Elevation Worship. Demonic, satanic. There's other ones. There's that, um, uh, that girl that didn't want to speak against homosexuals then you're not born again because if you don't want to speak against homosexuals you're supposed to tell people that are truly seeking the truth through you biblical truth you're supposed to tell them the truth of god not be ashamed you're, you're not supposed to keep your own safety for the pleasure of man for for uh pleasing mankind you know d denying god to please mankind that's biblical you do that the father will forgive you will deny you Okay, you deny Jesus before man, Father will deny you. That's, that's scripture. Um, Daigle, something, Daigle, I don't remember. Dangle, something. I have her, her face in my mind, but I can't get her name out. And she also has a song that God is a woman or something. God's not a woman. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. That's blasphemy from the pit of hell. So anyways... When the devil gets in your mind like that, think of worship music, okay? There's, I'll give you an example of people I listen to. The Afters, um, I used to listen to Casting Crowns. I still will, but they're old music because I'm not gonna listen to any collaboration that these artists have with Hillsong. Hillsong is trying to take over the world. So they're trying to find Christian artists that are born again, that are truly have music that serves the Lord and that feeds people's spirit and that helps the music to fight spiritually against spiritual wickedness that comes against us, just like this example I'm about to give you. And they're trying to put their little twist of poison in that band, in that song, through those lyrics. And if you take anything with poison, it is deadly to you. It doesn't matter if 99% of it is water. If there's 1% of poison, it's deadly to you. So they're going to not care that this band has 99% of Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ lyrics and, and feeling presence of the Lord. And then that 1% of from the pit of hell is there. Witchcraft is there. That's what the devil does. He puts his mark on things of God. So... I still do listen to Casting Crowns, one of my all-time favorite bands, 
but I will not listen to any songs that they have collaborating with Hillsong. So that's how you have to be wise. Okay, I'm not going to completely get rid of Casting Crowns because it's hard to find holy music these days in the days of deception. It's mass deception. And they're not coming in deception of we're Satanists putting out Satan worshiping music. No, they're coming in the deception that we're Christian. We're your brothers. We're your sisters in Christ. We're a church place of worship for the Lord. And we have Christian music that worships Jesus. It's not biblical Jesus. It's a false Christ Jesus, not biblical Jesus. There's two different Jesuses that you are to identify and one that you're to follow. If the true Christ comes in person and says, I am Jesus Christ, those who choose to follow me will have eternal life. And then another Jesus that comes, who is a false Jesus, and he says the same thing, which one are you going to? And if you go to the wrong one, what happens? You don't have eternal life because he doesn't have eternal life to give. So you're in a false relationship living out a false lifestyle for a false Christ, false God, that will, in the end, when you die, you will perish in the lake of fire for eternity. Because you'll come and say, Jesus, remember me from earth? We, we walked here and you showed me this and you told me to love myself and you gave me a mirror and told me to look at it and say how beautiful I am and you told me to help people become rich and blah, blah, blah. And he'll be like, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's exactly what happens. That's biblical. That's in scripture. So why would he say that to someone who's truly following him? Because they're not following him. They're following a false Christ. You follow biblical Christ. And you know his answer will be? You die. You go to heaven. Or you die, you go to the judgment. At the judgment, it says, well done, my good and faithful servant. That is also biblical. Why would he say that? Because you followed him. You followed biblical doctrine, not doctrines of devils. You followed denying yourself to pick up your cross, which is your faith, to follow Jesus and his commandments. Not to live for yourself. Have your faith here and there. And follow this false Christ that's teaching you doctrines of devils. So, of course, he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. <laughs> doesn't say, well done, celebrity this and that. Celebrity Michael, celebrity Jessica, celebrity Amber, celebrity Matthew, celebrity Mark, celebrity Brian. No, my good and faithful servant. Because we serve Christ. He doesn't serve us. So this vain, prideful, self-seeking, look at me, focus on me, teachings of I, you, me, is to feed your ego. Is to get in your mind and then get into your emotions and grow pride from a seed that was planted in you. These motivational speakers, they get into your mind with the information, these teachings that they speak from their books, from their, uh, what do you really call them, sermons? I don't think they're sermons. It's just motivational um, speaking events. Let's say that. They get in your mind, and what they tell you speaks to your heart and deceives you. Because they're telling you, focus on yourself. Make the best life that you can here. When Jesus, biblical Jesus says, your riches are in heaven, not on this earth. So you're trying to make your best life here when your life here is temporary. Why would you do that? That's like saying, buy a house here where we're going to visit for a weekend. Why would you do that? It's temporary. You're not going back to the house. It's not a vacation home. It's just you not thinking wise. And you're thinking like, oh, I better make the best of this situation of this weekend vacation and let's go buy a house so we can live in it during this weekend vacation. That doesn't make any sense to anybody. You do that when it is long term. I want to live here. I want to make a life here. 
Our life is not here. Our address is not here. We are not of this world. That is biblical. That's what Jesus said. He's taken us out of the world, put his spirit in us, and placed us back into the world. But we are not from this world. We have an address in heaven. He says he will go and prepare a place for us. That's scripture. So, for you to listen to these people that come from the very pit of hell that the devil is speaking through and telling you to focus on your life here, you're being deceived. You're, you're focused on making yourself your own God and not even realizing it. So, this pride comes from these teachings. This pride comes from the homosexual movement. They've made that very clear. They stand by the pride flag. So, pride is not of God. Scripture says, God resists the proud and gives grace unto the humble. So, in that equation, you want to be humble, not prideful. Because humble, you get grace. Pride, you get resisted by God. So, how are you going to say, I stand for pride, and I have a pride flag, and I stand with the Lord, and I love Jesus. You're loving a sinful Jesus. You're loving a Jesus that you created in your own mind to feed into your own sin of your lifestyle. You're not loving biblical Jesus. Because if you love biblical Jesus, you would hate your lifestyle. You would hate your sin. And you would not be promoting yourself as pride. Period. So, I'm feeding that to you, and it's not sugar-coated, because you need to know the truth. You're being deceived. And that's why I will never stand with Pride Month. I will never put up a flag for pride. First of all, the colors of the rainbow are because God covenant to mankind that he would not flood the earth and destroy mankind again. He made that covenant with Noah, and he made it known that it will stand for all of mankind. So, get out of here with your pride. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. And humble yourself. So, that's the movement that the devil is doing right now in this world of deception. Is putting out false Christianity that draws you into a church building. And you're in this church building and they're feeding you things that feed your belly. Not your soul. Not your spirit. It's feeding your belly, which is, which is flesh, which is pride, which is self-seeking. And that's what they're doing. And you're going to this buffet and you're overeating, which is gluttony, which is sin. When you overeat, so you're overeating this information at this buffet of lies. And then you're living this life out sluggishly and tired and weak and vulnerable to attack and your mind is clouded you have confusion all of this stuff I wonder why you're going to a buffet every Sunday whereas you should be going to a church place of worship for God that is Holy Spirit filled that is led by a Holy Spirit led pastor that gets his teachings from the Lord directly and his word, not some school that they went to and learned from and got a degree from. No. You go to this place and you will get your meal delivered to you in the way that you will not overeat, but you will be fed what you need to be fed in a way that it gives you strength, that it gives you knowledge, that it gives you wisdom, that it gives you courage and boldness. That most importantly gives you truth. Clarity of mind. Peace of God. That's where you want to go and eat every Sunday. That's, where, that's how you want to eat every day throughout the week. But see, people that feed into this service on Sunday of a buffet, they're so used to this buffet that they love getting heavy... Uh, what is it? Um... They become overweight spiritually because they're feeding themselves. They're overly feeding themselves at the buffet on Sunday because this is not a church place of worship of God. Joel Osteen Church, Bethel Church, Hellsong Church, 
uh, Elevation Worship Church. These are churches that are buffets that are feeding you garbage that is actually harming you, not helping you. But you have itching ears, as scripture said would happen, and you heap to yourself these teachers because they give you the food that you want, not the food that you need. And you don't know any better because you don't know God's word, you don't open God's word, you don't follow God's word, so you just take any food that is handed to you. You don't realize, this is not good for me, I shouldn't be eating this. And how do you know that? Because God's word says what they're saying is not biblical and I shouldn't be taking it in as information and feeding myself with it. So they're going on Sunday and what the devil does is just like school, he has you learn in school, but then he also has your brain working outside of school at home too with homework. It's not enough to just be brainwashed in school. No, you have to be brainwashed every day throughout your life until you decide to leave school, until you graduate from school. You're conditioned, you're brainwashed, you're, you're, brain, you're mind controlled by this information that they feed you. So you go to this school and then you come home and you gotta still have your brain jogging this information, taking in this information that you shouldn't be taking in. But we have to because it's legal, it's illegal to not go to school. You get fined, your parents can go to prison and so on and so forth. So the system is set up in the way that it's forced and you don't have a choice. But you do have a choice to allow yourself to accept and believe this information. You can remember it enough to pass a test to make the government happy, but to believe it and to live it out in your life and to write books about it or tell people about it as truth, that's a whole different lifestyle. So just like school, the devil wants you to go to this school, which is a church place of worship for Satan and a false light of Christ, which is a false Christ. And he wants you to learn here on Sunday be fed from this buffet, but then want a buffet every day throughout the week. That, you know, having just an appetizer isn't enough now. I gotta feed my belly more. Having, you know, a piece of pizza isn't enough. I need a whole large pizza to myself. So now throughout the week, how do I do these affirmations? How, how do I continue to love myself? How do I continue to be vain? How do I continue to make myself a good person? How do I, do all of this stuff that focuses on self, but none of Christ. That gives glory to myself, but none glory to God. When scripture says all things should be, all, all things in your life should give God glory, not yourself. So you're living in this way throughout your, the rest of the week because the enemy wants you to continue to be fed and become obese, where it's extremely unhealthy for you physically, but that's obese physically. This is spiritually. This is unhealthy for you spiritually. You're spiritually obese. So it's ironic <laughs> that if you go to a Holy Spirit led church and you're fed the meal that you need, that that pastor knows that you need, that God wants you to have, that will be edifying for you and others around you. And then you go home and he wants you to eat that same meal, but the devil gives you a disinterest toward eating this kind of way. Whereas when it works for the devil's benefit, you can eat a buffet at home. But when it works for God's benefit, oh, don't overeat. You know, you shouldn't get a whole pizza, you should just get a slice. Hey, you should just have an appetizer, you should take it easy, you shouldn't be eating so much. Because he doesn't want your spirit to be fed. He doesn't want your brain to gain that knowledge of God, that wisdom of God. So, where it's his benefit, he doesn't care what you do because it's harming you. And the more you give in, the more you eat, the more harm it does. The more consistent you are with it, the more harm it's doing to you. But when it comes to God and it works for God's benefit against the devil, he tries to intervene as if he's filtering what you eat. You go to the buffet, you come back and you got all this nice food that you want to eat. And he says, hey, let me see your plate. No, nope, take this off. That's not good for you. Take that away. That's of God. This is biblical. This needs to go. Okay, you have chocolate cake left, which is sinful. I'm not saying it's chocolate cake is sinful. I'm just giving you an example of a parable. Uh, that's sinful. That can stay. You got cheesecake. That's sinful. That can stay. Um, this corn, that's of God. We don't want that. 
God's wisdom here. We don't need that. Here you go. This is what you have left to eat. And that's what he does. So, how does he do that? He brings distractions. He has you focus on other things instead of reading God's word. He has you busy and distracted with people that need your help, people that are calling you, people that are texting you, people that are trying to take up your attention and your time. And you don't have the obedience enough. You don't sacrifice enough for God to be like, I understand that I'm like this person that needs to be reached, but I have the option of turning off my phone. I have the option of putting my phone away from me. I have the option of silencing my phone. I have the option of not checking this message right now and checking it later. I have the option of not calling this person back right away, but calling them later. I have these options. Now with these options, if I choose to give in right away, I'm allowing the enemy to take up my time. I'm allowing him to deceive me, to control me, to um, distract me, to consume my time and take it away from God. But if I'm wise, and I know I need to place God first in my life, I know that's beneficial for my spirit. It's beneficial for my spiritual growth and relationship with God. It's beneficial for my warfare against the enemy. Then guess what? Now I'm going to um, not allow these distractions. I'm not going to give in to them right away. I'm going to say, hey, I'll take care of this later. Hey, I'm going to turn my phone off. Hey, I'm not going to reply back to this person right away. Hey, I'll be with you in one moment. I got to do this. Hey, you want to hang out? Okay, well, I'll call you back when I'm done. And that's what you do, is you sacrifice for the Lord. But back to the topic of this video is how the devil wants our mind. Now, when you watch, um, I already told you, when you watch TV, there'll be something sinful. If not, the entire show will be sinful. And when you watch TV, for an episode, it will start off a sitcom, I mean, it will start off, you know, not so bad at first. Because if it's so bad at first, it's going to be rejected right away. People are going to be turned off and they're going to be like, no, 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 like not, maybe not these days. These days, is, you know, good is evil and evil is good. But woe to them who call good evil and evil good, as scripture says. But for the most part, what I've seen by example is when a sitcom comes out, it's usually not as bad the first couple episodes. And then he starts to slide in sinful stuff slide in sinful scenes let's show partying and drugs and alcohol let's show naked women naked men let's show same-sex marriages let's show gossiping let's show fighting let's show uh cheating and lying and stealing and these will start to creep into the script to the plot of the episode and you're already caught into the characters. You're already caught into the sitcom from the beginning. Now it's like a movie. Who watches a movie halfway and then says, you know what, I'm gonna leave the theater, I'm not gonna watch the rest. As far as I know, I can't speak for everyone, but nobody does that. They're coming to get the beginning, the middle, and the ending because it all comes together for a whole message. Just like who, who starts a puzzle and does half the puzzle and says, I'm not going to do the rest. You want to see the whole picture. In order to see the whole picture, you have to do the whole puzzle, every single piece. Even if five pieces are missing, that keeps you from seeing the whole picture. Clearly, you see the whole picture on the box because they want you to know what puzzle you're buying. But for you to see the picture and make the picture happen because you're putting the pieces and using that skill set, then that's different. So you want to see the whole picture. So when it comes to the enemy, he baits you. He baits you, gets you engaged with the characters first. He has a character with each different characteristic because it's trying to find the audience that fits that character, that, that person in that moment of watching is like, that's me, that's me. Oh, I do that. Oh, I dress like that. Oh, oh, I, I speak like that. Oh, I gossip like that. Oh, I sleep around like that. I'm that cheerleader. Oh, oh, that's me, the alcoholic stumbling around. And you're like, not even realize you're pointing at bad behavior and claiming it as yourself. But that's what they want. They want to feed into the audience of that character. So 
they're not just going to have one character. And, I mean, uh, five different characters, and they all act the same. That would be very boring to watch. You have to watch the conflict of characters. This one is a very loving person. This one's an evil person. Ooh, this evil person speaks to me. This loving person speaks more to me. And you're going to have, sitting there with your spouse, with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend, I speak to all the world. God is for marriage, not for fornication relationships, but I'm speaking to everybody of the world. So you got that. You got your friend. You got family members. You're watching this. It's going to speak differently to one of you. Okay, you're not, I mean, I can't say you're not. You could both be the type that is caring and loving, so that one character speaks to both of you the same. Or one of you is more dark, uh, a dark kind of lifestyle, live a dark kind of lifestyle in real life. So this dark lifestyle living character speaks to you. But your friend doesn't live dark side, and that character doesn't speak to them. As like, that's me, that's relatable, I understand that. They've caught my attention. So then they're looking for who's them. Okay, you found who's you, that's cool. And it's like a video game. It's like you choose your character of who you want to be to fight these missions in the game. So that's basically what you're doing with TV is you're trying to find the character that speaks to you. I can't speak for everybody in doing this, but for majority, this is what you do. And you're looking because you want to place yourself in that moment you want to place yourself in that tv show because if he can get you to place yourself that makes it more real for you if you can't find a character that speaks to you then to you it's a file that's trying to come into it's a file that's trying to come into your folder and you reject it because you don't care to save it it does no and it does nothing for you it's not edifying to you it's not entertaining to you you don't care for it Maybe your friend just wants you to watch it. They love it, but you don't. I've had that happen. My wife, she loves, her and her mom loves this movie. I watched it. I thought it was ridiculously stupid. And I told them that. I was like, this is, this is dumbing down comedy. But hey, that's what they like. I'm not against it. You know, if that's what you like and it's not sinful, cool. You have your own characteristics that you guys like, sense of humor and this and that. I'm, I'm not expecting everybody to be like me. So who am I to judge? But... If it's sinful, I most definitely will get on my wife about it and be like, what are you watching? This is sinful. You shouldn't be allowing your eyes to see this. But she's, she's a good godly woman. I don't have to worry about that with her. Thank God. But um, that's what you do is you look for that relatability. And if it becomes relatable, it's almost like a portal where you like go into the TV and become that character. Just like Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone that happened is, is the brother and sister, I believe, if I remember correctly. They're watching TV, they clicked the button, and then they became the characters in the TV. They're literally telling you what's happening as you are watching TV. By you allowing yourself to be entertained by what you're watching, you are becoming the character in the television show. And by what that character is doing, you're learning and taking that information as a file into your folder and allowing it to be stored in your brain. And now if that character is showing you a different side of you and like, oh look, this character who's just like me, they don't back down from fights. They actually throw fists and they beat the crap out of that person. Hey, they're just like me. Maybe I should do that too. And now you change yourself. The enemy wants to change your identity because if he can change your identity, he controls your identity. If your identity is in Christ, he can't control your identity because Christ has identity. He, your identity belongs to Christ. So when the devil comes to get your identity from Christ, Christ says, get away from me, devil. I rebuke you in the name. I, I, no, I rebuke you. He wouldn't say in the name of Jesus. He is Jesus. He would say, I rebuke you. Okay? So the enemy can't get your identity if it's in Christ. That's why if you deny yourself and live for Christ, you get rid of your identity. And you become a new creature in Christ. You're not a new creature, period. You're a new creature in Christ. That is biblical. It's strict on saying in Christ for a reason. Because you're not living for yourself anymore. You now live for Christ. And you now have a renewed heart. Why do you need to have a renewed heart? Because that heart was wicked and evil. God wants you to have a heart that loves all. Gives Christ the love of Christ to all. 
So if you're a child of God, you can't represent the devil. You still can if you backslide into flesh. But I'm saying, as your identity, you no longer are identified as a wicked, evil, manipulative, deceiving person. Now you are a loving, generous, giving, caring, supportive, honest person. Because you now have a heart of flesh, not a heart of stone, as scripture says. So when you become new in Christ, you get a renewed heart and then a renewed mind. Why do you need a renewed mind? Because that mind is garbage. The mind that you were born with is garbage because it is being fed garbage. The minute you come into this world, you go to school. They feed you this garbage. You go home. You have a television more, most likely. Everybody, for the most part, I can't speak for everybody, but I'm pretty sure most people have a television. So it's just like having a toothbrush. It's the common um, object, whatever, tool, whatever in your home. So you go to school, you come home, you do homeschooling, which is watching TV. You see it as entertainment because they want to make it fun. Just like learning, they try to make it fun because if it's not fun, you don't want to learn and you don't learn. So they're like, how can we brainwash them to where they accept the brainwashing? Oh, let's make it fun. Let's make it entertaining and enjoyable for them. Let's bring them on a field trip. Let's, let's have them do a project as a group together. And this is how they do it. It's deception. So if they were like, hey, this is what you got to learn, but there's no field trip, there's no projects, there's no involvement with other people whatsoever, but you got to do it by yourself. It's extremely boring. Have fun. You're not going to want to do it. And you're going to reject the information. Just like a file trying to come into your folder, you're going to say, nope, I'm not storing that information. But if it's fun, then you're like, oh, file, come on into my folder. File, come into my folder. Store information. Or store information. And that's what happens. So it's the same thing with TV. They make it fun. They make it entertaining. But there's a secret hidden message that is subconsciously going into your brain that you're not even realizing is happening because it's just slipped right in. It's slipped right in there. Just like as if you're handing in a report and the person proofreads it and then before you go to hand it in to the person that is actually going to accept it, you're like, oh, after proofreading, you're like, oh, let me just write this real quick. And then you hand it in. That's the poison that you just entered into what was already good, what was already signed off, what was already looked over and approved of. And now you didn't hand it back to them. You handed it in. So that's the poison that you, he slides in last minute that you don't notice. And that happens through music, through movies, through television, through books at the library, through magazines that you read that feed into your insecurities, to newspapers, to news on TV. It's all garbage. Now, I don't expect you to look at a wall the rest of your life until you die so that way you can be spiritually safe. But what I do expect you to and what God expects you to is to hold every thought captive is to listen to his word that says don't allow your eyes to see what is wicked and evil and to reprove the works thereof that is scripture that's what i expect you to do to filter filter this is okay to do this is not okay to do so let's do this let's not do this not this is okay to do this is not okay to do but this is boring this is more fun and entertaining so let's do this even though it's bad that's not wise and that's quenching the holy spirit so and that's disobedience to the lord rebellion being a rebellious child which will be chastised as scripture says because he loves you and he wants to correct you just like your parents that ground you you think they hate you because they're grounding you no they're grounding you because they want you to learn a lesson they want you to learn what you did was wrong and they want that to be engraved into your mind so that way the next time you think to do it, you realize it's wrong because you were grounded for it. So now your mind has been programmed differently, trained up differently, that 
before you allowed it, it was okay. But after the groundation period, you now have your mind thinking, hey, if you do this again, this is gonna happen to you. Do you really wanna go through that again of being grounded, not being able to go to this concert, not being able to hang out with your friends, not whatever the groundation is, doing chores, and your mind now is in alert mode. Whereas before it was like, you're a child, but you're an adult in control for some reason. And your mind just like, hey, if you wanna do this, okay, cool, we'll do it. Okay, yeah, you wanna believe that? Cool. You wanna hang out with that person? Great. You wanna go there? Sure. And now because of the groundation, your mind is like, wait, why am I listening to you? You're just a child. You, you just got grounded. <laughs> so your mind is like reprogrammed now. And it's on alert mode of like, no longer, oh, okay, that's cool, let's do it. It's, it's more like, is it okay with your parents? Is this approved by God before we go here, before we hang out with this person, before we marry this person, before we make this move, before we get this job? And that's your mind now because of the traumatic experience of being chastised. They're chastising you because they love you. Their love protects you. But it comes as harm because it's not fun. It's not playful like the devil does. The devil gives you playful and fun, but it's harmful. And you allow it because it's fun. Your parents do what's right, what's needed, and it's not fun and playful, but it's helpful. It helps you become a better you. It helps you become a better you in Christ. So they set these examples so the next time you go to do the same thing or something similar, you're going to rethink that scenario. Because now you know how it's going to let, how it's going to turn out. Just like if you watch a movie for the first time, you have no idea what's going to happen. Everything is a surprise. Oh, wow, that came out of nowhere. I didn't expect that. Did she really break up with him? Oh, my goodness. I didn't even see that happening. Man, he lost his job. He was just about to move here and this and that. And, you know, these are the scenarios that are new to you. But if you rewatch that video, that movie with someone who hasn't seen it, to them, it's everything is a surprise. To you, you already know what's going to happen. So it's not going to take you by surprise. It's not going to be like, oh, they just broke up. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, he lost his job. Yeah, I saw that too. It, it's, that's what it's like. So now your brain is reprogrammed to be on that. I already know what's going to happen mindset and that groundation or that physical beating which I don't believe in which I don't think is parenting that's actually physical abuse the parent can lie to themselves all they want I, I don't care what race you are it is wrong it is dead wrong I am a victim of abuse from my own mother who have who has passed away and thankfully before she passed she gave her life to Christ and became my best friend but growing up, my mom was a monster. You ever seen the movie, I Can Only Imagine? That was my life, except it wasn't my father, it was my mother. And she would physically abuse me with a wooden spoon. So, no, that is not parenting. That's called being lazy and getting the job done with harm, with the child being tormented in a way that they're terrified of the very person who gave birth to them, who brought life in, who brought them into the world, who now they're afraid to even look at the face of. They're afraid to even be in the presence of because when they see you, they don't see their mother, they don't see their father, they see a monster because that's the example you gave them. Through grounding, they will see you as a monster. They don't even know the difference. I mean, they don't even know the half of it. I'd rather be grounded than beaten. So they don't even know. They think that's, that's terrible life. Oh, I'm grounded. And in that moment, they'll hate it. But afterwards, if they're not a continuous rebellious child and they realize I'm not the one in control, my parents are, they're the ones that feed me. They're the ones that raise me. They're the ones that drive me. They're the ones that pay my bills, pay my rent, give me a place to live. All of that. Love me. Then they're the ones in control until I move out and I become my own adult. So when that happens, grounding is little to nothing. Abuse is everything. You can't tell me 
that a good whipping on the butt, a good smack on the butt, a whipping with the belt does anything. It does nothing but bring devils into your home to torment your child. Okay, because my mom abused me because her father abused her. My grandmother, who's Catholic, who has a devil in her, sent her father, I mean her husband, my, my mom's father, to hit her. Every time she didn't do something right or this devil threw my grandmother, wanted her to do something and she wouldn't listen, go get the belt, smack her, teach her a lesson. If you think that's love, you don't know what love is. That is abuse and you should be put in prison. That's no different than using a weapon. Okay, so like someone who's com committed crime as using a weapon, the deadly force. What the hell do you think that is? Just because they're their parent doesn't mean they can beat them. That doesn't give them any right to. Child Protective Services should come and take them away. But anyways, I'm not getting into that. So that's the difference is it will teach you a lesson. Your mind will realize, wait, you're not an adult to make your own decisions. So let me reprogram myself real quick and put up all these blocks and walls for your safety, your protection, because you're still a child. And then let's live out your life now. And now that scenario comes, your friend's like, hey, you want to do this again? I know you got grounded, but maybe you won't get caught this time. Your brain reminds you of that moment, that experience, what it felt like when you're grounded, you hated it. And then you realize being trained up right, you say, no, I, I'm not gonna do it. And that's how your parents train you up in a way that is helpful and not harmful and not abusive. If you're abusive, you're a monster and you need demon deliverance. You need Jesus Christ in your life. And a lot of parents become abusive because of Jezebel's spirit behind them, because of traumatic abuse, like I've told you of my own mother, and they pass it on generation to generation. Well, it ends with me. We'll never lay hands on my child or my wife, ever. So I break that curse in Jesus' name. But that, that kind of abuse, man, that, that really takes a toll on your life. And that kind of abuse, you become a magnet to other abusers. It's almost like they see that you have a black eye and you're walking around with this black eye and then people that love to abuse people and know that they can find a victim who won't fight back, they'll be like, oh, that person has a black eye. Maybe I can go give them another black eye. And you become a magnet spiritually in the spirit realm to other abusers. And they'll come in your life acting like they love you, they're in love with you, they wanna marry you, uh, they're your favorite cousin, they're your best friend and they will verbally abuse you, or physically, or both. So, be careful of that. Back to the mind. Magazines. Magazines get into your mind. What do you do when you're sitting in an office, waiting for your appointment? Conveniently, there's a magazine table right there. Just, oh, we know you're bored. We're not gonna give you a Bible to read because that's beneficial for you and doesn't help us with the world trying to condition you and brainwash you. So we're gonna give you magazines that feed into your insecurities that make money for the government because then you're gonna pick yourself apart and then you're gonna look at the mirror and not like what you see. And then you're gonna to wanna to find a costume that you'll wanna look in the mirror at and be happy with. So now you go and get makeup and you'll go and get plastic surgery done. So that way you have this costume, this false identity of yourself uh, and you transform yourself into someone you're not because of a magazine that you read, that you allowed information to get into your mind, that information then was saved into a, a, your folder, and then your folder spoke to your heart, and your heart says, yes, let's go and call this plastic surgeon. Yes, let's go and buy all this expensive makeup and cake on our face every day. And that's what you gotta realize. I'm not against makeup, like I'm against, there, there definitely is a spiritual influence with makeup, pray, to, pray and ask God about that. But there's a way to be healthy with it. Like for special events, 
a nice dinner, an outing, sure. But every day where? That's toxic. That's unhealthy. That's demonic. That's changing your identity. There's a difference between enhancement for an event and changing your identity and living out that identity as a false version of yourself. That's the difference of the two. Just like there's difference of drinking alcohol and being safe with it, even though I don't condone alcohol at all, because if, if there's a chance that danger can come from it from drinking more, why even tempt yourself to drink even a little? So if you have that control, it's not sin. According to scripture, drunkenness is sin. So if you have that control, drink a, sip, drink, have, drink a glass of wine at dinner, have a beer at dinner, have a beer or watching TV, it's no problem. It's not sinful according to scripture. So I can't, I can't speak against that. But what I can speak against is someone who used to drink and used to get drunk. It depends on, again, the person's lifestyle. It depends on if the person's depressed, they're probably going to drink more and they're going to become an alcoholic. They have uh, the probability of becoming an alcoholic. If a person's depressed, if a person just got divorced, if a person just got cheated on, whatever, they're probably going to drink more. Compared to a person's life who's good, happy marriage, happy family, successful job. Hey, I just want to kick back and have a beer. Hey, I just want to kick back, have a glass of wine. Nothing wrong with that. It's just like the same concept with a gun. Someone who doesn't have the intent to kill, who isn't psychologically messed up, is just going to use the gun at a firing range and just have fun and be entertained and know how to shoot and how to change out the bullets and know the models and information of the gun and have that knowledge and that's it and use it for safety if needed then there's that person who's depressed who's bullied at school who, whose girlfriend is cheating on him with his best friend or vice versa if it's the opposite sex i'm talking to who saw in this movie that it was cool to go out and killing who played this video game that showed it's cool to killing and they want to go and get a real gun and do that then that's probably not a good idea for that person to possess a gun. So it's the same concept. That's why love for love of money is the root of all evil. But money itself is not. Money itself, you can be wise with it. You pay your bills. You have to pay bills. You have to pay your rent. If you have an apartment, you have uh, a condo, whatever. You, you got to pay what you need to pay, necessities. But the love of money is I'm gonna go and do this sinful thing to get money quick. I'm gonna go do this illegal thing to get money quick. I'm gonna scam this person to get money quick. I'm gonna be a hustler who focuses on getting wealthy in a sinful, illegal way. I'm gonna sell drugs to get money quick. Then that is the love of money. And that is the root of evil because that's where it stems from, evil. So there's many examples in the Bible that says, if you do it this way, it's not bad. But if you do it this way, which is more than this way, then it's sinful. So what you have to understand with magazines is you're reading the magazine and the magazine is showing you hair that you want, that you don't have, and contact lenses that you can buy because you don't have that color eyes because God made a mistake with you apparently and didn't give you the color eyes that you want. And, oh, this skinny body that I need to start working out now to get. And, you know, all this stuff that you're reading through the magazine. And when you're reading this magazine, you're just, like, picking yourself apart. As if, like, you have this plate of food that makes you happy. That gives you peace. That brings joy to you. And it's exactly what you want. And it's, it's fruit and someone comes over and says, hey, that fruit is toxic for you, even though it's not. You need to get rid of that fruit. You should go get the desserts. You should go get the, the ice cream and the cake and, and the candy and, and put that on your plate. And that's what they're doing. So now you're picking your plate apart and you're like, oh, that's right. I am too skinny, I'm anorexic, even though you're a healthy weight. I need to get rid of this fruit. I am too fat, even though you're not obese, I need to get rid of this fruit. I am ugly, I have freckles, even though that makes you unique and stand out from everyone else, then you get rid of this fruit. 
I don't have long hair like this, but I have hair and I don't have to worry about that. So you get rid of this fruit. And that's what you're doing is you just pick yourself apart emotionally because the enemy knows that women move in emotions, men move in logic. So women in emotions, that's why men don't understand women and women can't understand men and it will never happen. I don't care if they make a movie with what's his name, uh, what women want. That was actually conditioning of a man dressing like a woman. That's transgender. That was transgender conditioning, but your brain missed it because you like Mel Gibson. That's who it was, Mel Gibson. You like that actor. So anything that he does, he dresses like a, like a clown. Cool, it's just a character. It's Mel Gibson. If he dresses like a demon, cool, it's just a character. It's Mel, Mel Gibson. Dresses like a woman, oh, just a character, Mel Gibson. But if you see him on the street in a dress, you'd be like, what the heck is wrong with Mel Gibson? Do you see the problem with that? The conditioning is virtual. Because virtual, we see as not real. Real life, it is real. It's right in front of our very eyes. So virtual, if you see it not as real, then files are being placed into your folder without any kind of protection. So you're looking at Mel Gibson, oh, this is fake, it's not real. Haha, <laughs> that's funny, he's wearing stockings, he's dressing up in a bra. They make it funny so that way you're not aware that it's actually a man dressing as a woman, which is kind of creepy. And yeah, it shouldn't be happening. And not even a character should want to be allowed to play that role. But hey, we're not going to get into that. So that conditioning is happening to your brain. And you're not even realizing it because it's in the form of entertainment. It's in the form of fiction. So now you're seeing that and it will speak to an audience. It will speak to a man who is confused about his sexuality. Who thinks because a spirit of deception a spirit of confusion came over that person and tells them hey you're actually a girl you're not a man that's basically saying god made a mistake with you and that spirit tries to get you to be a transgender which gives glory to satan and takes it away from god so you go and you watch that film you never even thought to dress as a woman before but now because you saw the example of someone else doing it who's a man, it makes you comfortable. Because it's a celebrity, it makes you even more comfortable. If that celebrity can do it, why can't I? If people accept that celebrity doing it and they think that movie's great, why can't I? So now your brain is being conditioned because it found its target audience, which is you. And you now go and put on your sister's clothing. Or you go to the, and buy from a store and you put it on yourself. And you wouldn't have done that if you hadn't seen that example. So that's what these movies do. It's killing two birds with one stone. It's conditioning people who don't think that way to accept that way and to have it be normalized in your mind as okay. And it's also trying to kill the other bird by finding the target audience that that will speak to and transform that person through courage and boldness into that lifestyle now. That's how deep it gets, people. So, this is no joke of the mind. The enemy wants your mind. God wants your mind to be pure, holy, and righteous. To be filled with his word. Could you imagine if you knew the Bible inside and out, you memorized every single verse, every single scripture, every, every single chapter, every single book, obviously not possible. But if it were, could you just imagine that? You're walking around in life. This lie comes to you. Scripture comes to you of truth. Nope, I reject that. That's not being placed into my folder. That's how you would live. But because you lack knowledge, which Jesus said, my people perish for their lack of knowledge, that's scripture. It's because you are going around like that sniper who is not aware of their surroundings or who is aware of their surroundings and even more foolishly doesn't care. It's just like, hey, that's cool that they're over there. They're not going to kill me. Let me kill this guy. Boom. And then you're dead because they hear they see that guy go down. They see where the shot comes from. Now you're dead. But see, if you're wise and you're looking and you identify all of them, 
if I shoot here, this one's probably gonna see that person die because they're right next to them. So then I'm gonna have to shoot them quick before these people see. And if one sees here, it's probably this one. So then I gotta shoot that person. And then that person next to them, so they're gonna see, I gotta shoot them next. And that's your mindset, is being a, 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 a defender, being on guard, putting up that wall, being wise as serpents, harmless as doves, as scripture says. Because we're supposed to be wise in the way that serpents move. They know how to get their prey. They know how to devour. But we're not supposed to be evil in our approach. We're supposed to be harmless and loving like a dove. So we're supposed to be wise but harmless. <laughs> so back to the mind. There's magazines. There's men's health magazines. Oh, I need to get bigger biceps. I, I need to start getting this whey protein. I need to start eating right, eating this way, eating that way. I need to get steroids, this and that. I want to get big and bulk like this guy. If you make a career to be a bodybuilder, that's one thing. But if you're doing it just to show off, that's pride. That's vanity. You need to repent and ask God to humble you. Same thing with women. If you're doing it for health reasons, that's fine. But if you're doing it to be the most beautiful woman in the world, to self-gain, um, attention-seeking model, whatever it may be, then that's pride. That's vanity. You need to repent and ask God to humble you. Now, what else is there? Music. Music goes into the mind because it's listened through the ears. The ears are the doorway to the mind. So you, whatever you hear, your mind is receiving. So if I hear this person gossiping, my mind stores that information, if I choose to allow it to, into the file. If they're gossiping, but I don't wanna hear what they have to say, I'm disgusted by their gossiping, then my mind is not going to receive that information. It's almost like there's like a, a tube here that goes into the mind and when it's gossiping and you hear it, it's like only right here. And if you reject it, oh, no, it's out. But if you allow it and you're like, oh, that's gossiping. Oh, I need to hear more. I, I'm curious more of what's going on. Then it's like the tube keeps going and going and then it's into the mind, it's too late. So that's basically what's happening is you have to filter what is of God, what is righteous, what is pure, what is holy, and that is what you allow into your file, into your folder, I mean, is those files that feed your spirit, that give you growth in your relationship with God, that help you fight against the lies of this world, that help you keep the love of God and not the love of the world. Because those who love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. That's scripture. So... You can't say, I love this world, love hanging out with my friends, partying this and that, and doing all this sinful stuff, and then say, I love Jesus, God first. Oh, God is so great. He blessed me. It's not like that. It's, I hate this world because it's the devil's world. He's the lowercase g God of this world. We know that that's biblical. So why am I going to like something that he's offering me? No, I'm going to reject it. Can I like things in the world? Yes, but not sinful. And not everything is sinful. What is sinful is what goes against God, what goes against his word, what leads you into your flesh. That is what's sinful. So you have to filter what's okay, what's not okay. You do it by living out in fear you're like, oh, I shouldn't go to this location at night because it's an alleyway and it's dangerous. How do you know this? Because of what you've seen, what you've heard, and now that's programmed your mind to bring this information to you at this moment. If you hadn't seen or heard that experience, you would go through that alleyway thinking nothing because you don't know what will happen. But because you listen to the news and the news says there was a raping in the alley, there was a killing in the alley, or because you actually witnessed with your eyes walking down the street, you saw a killing or a raping in the alley. Then that's one thing. But if you don't see or hear anything about anything bad of an alley, 
then you're not viewing that alley in a bad way. Can something bad happen? Yeah, of course. Can something bad not happen? Of course. It's a gamble, it's 50-50. But it's the mind that brings the perception. So you're going down that alley and you're in fear, you're on guard. You're like listening for noises, looking around for movement, trying to find the next closest exit, closest street, closest person that you need to run to in case you need to, have your phone in your hand, have a, have a knife on you, have a gun on you, whatever it may be. But when it comes to TV, you're just back watching. And it's just as harmful, if not more harmful, because it's your mind. So there's magazine, there's TV, there's movies, there's books. Now I'm not talking about books like children's books, if you give a mouse a cookie, this, that. Yes, there are sinful children books as well, especially in these end days. But I'm talking about books of like self-learning, self-development, um, history of this. It's lies. And it's this person's perception of life. It's this person's knowledge and wisdom of man if it's not biblical, if it's not of God, then it's of the world. So you're taking this information as truth, when the only truth in your life is God's word. So anything in conflict with God's word is not truth, it's poison to you. And you shouldn't allow it into your brain, you shouldn't allow your ears to hear it, you shouldn't allow your mind to read it and think of it. Especially those romantic novels, that's fantasy. That's fantasy, that's lust, that is sin. But you're viewing it as entertainment. You're viewing it as making time go by. You're viewing it as I'm lonely and I wanna read this. But you're not viewing it in the way that you should be viewing it, which, which is it's lust. It is sinful. It is fornication. In the stories, I don't read them. I was a cover model for two books. And I'm not naming the books because I don't need people looking up these books. And for the respect of my own wife, she doesn't need it because I'm, I'm shirtless. And in that moment, I did not realize the devil was using me to pimp me out as his prostitute, basically. Like a piece of meat for women to lust after through these books because you're a character in the book. I never read the book. Even though I was on it, I was sent the book because I wanted... Uh, I was in the entertainment industry as a model and actor and did stunt performing here and there. And I had the book for my resume. For like, oh, this is something that I've accomplished in life and it was cool in the moment. But I didn't realize everything I was doing, fitness, modeling, uh, half naked person on the front cover of a magazine, uh, runway shows, fitness runway shows, it's all shirtless. It's all using me as a piece of meat to get women and homosexual men turned on, to get them um, thinking fornication, to get them using their imagination and, and thinking these sinful thoughts. And I didn't realize I was doing that until after I left the industry. Because when you're in it, you're not realizing it. It's when you're out that you can see it. And you're, oh, dang, that's what I did. I didn't, re I didn't realize that. When you're in it, you're in it, you're distracted, There's, you can't focus on stuff, you don't know what's going on, you're being used here, your photos here, a runway shows here, red carpet here, people talking to you here, comments here, but when you're out of it and you're no longer in that mess, you can finally think clear. You can finally focus. You don't have any distractions. And then you review, almost like a reviewing of a tape of a crime, and you're trying to catch you know, uh, evidence, you're reviewing it and like, oh wow, he used me here for this and this is why I moved down here because he wanted that and this is what he was hoping that I would do and so on and so forth. So, no, you have to realize those books are sinful. You need to get rid of them. You need to trash them, not sell them. Don't pass that curse on to someone else of that lustful mindset. That changes your mindset. It's not teaching you a godly marriage. It's not saying, this is John and this is Becky 
and I just come up with random names. <laughs> and they met on this first date and they were careful. They didn't fornicate. And then all of a sudden they got married and they're so happy and he got a job and they moved and then they had a kid. And I can't say there aren't stories like that, but most likely it's not going to be because it's not entertaining enough. It's not drama filled enough. So it's not gonna gain the audience that it wants. But what it will gain is the audience that is seeking God, that is seeking scripture, that is living for God, that is trying to live holy and righteous according to God's word. So that's not what you're reading. You're reading how to become a submissive wife, not submissive to the Lord, to, to your husband through the Lord, but submissive to a man that wants to dominate you like 50 shades of gray, submissive uh not just submissive um you're learning how to be a sex slave for men and, and how to seek out and, and you give your body to men to sleep around with and you're just learning all this information that is not beneficial for you and the enemy's getting in your imagination now you're having fantasies and now when you are married he's going to bring those fantasies back to you and now it's going to ruin your marriage because now you're going to struggle with fantasies and imaginations and now you're masturbating which is sinful you're committing sin against your own body which is the holy spirit is the temple of god where the holy spirit resides as scripture says and now you're fantasizing during sex with your spouse of some other man or some other scene in a movie that you saw or a celebrity photo that you saw <clears throat> or a girl that you cross the path of, a guy you cross the path of at the gym or out and about, whatever it may be, and you're not in the moment that you're supposed to be in because you've conditioned your brain and reprogrammed it into fantasy mode, into imagination mode. Just like those people in the world who don't fantasize, who don't have imagination in a lustful way like that because they don't watch films like that or they don't listen and read books like that then they're gonna be set apart from those who do. And they're not gonna have that fantasy, imagination, reprogramming of their mind to be problematic in their life. So that's a folder, that's a, that's a file you saved into your folder. They didn't save that file. So that file doesn't exist to them. But if that file is in your folder, the enemy can take your folder from your past of everything that you saved then and try to bring it into your new folder if you allow it. And that's the new folder in Christ. And that's backsliding into sin. So, these are things that you got to be aware of that are very dangerous. Um, what else is there? There's fantasy, imagination, movies, TV shows, music. Music, he likes to use the beat as the form of entertainment. Because if you just listen for a beat, most beats come with very, very bad sinful music. Because that beat is the conditioning that beat is the distraction away from the trance the trance is the sinful lyrics that beat is the distraction to allow the trance to come into your brain because you're not listening to the lyrics you're listening to the beat but the lyrics are still being spoken you're not listening to an instrumental song and if i told you to you'd be like no there's no fun in that of course not because you know you're listening to the lyrics even though you're mainly listening to the beat. But by you listening to those lyrics, if it was just an instrumental song, which means no lyrics whatsoever, but there's a beat, you're good. You're safe. There's nothing sinful. But if it's a beat with sinful lyrics, those sinful lyrics are the spiritual doorway that you're opening into your life, into your marriage. That lustful spirit, if it's sexual lyrics, that you're allowing into your life, into your marriage. And if you're listening to the music, but your husband isn't or your wife isn't, that spirit is transferring to them because you gave it legal right. It's like you both live in the same house. You chose to give the key to that spirit. Your wife or husband still lives in the house with you, but now you have an intruder because your husband gave legal right. Your, your wife gave legal right. That's how dangerous this is. So he uses also social media social media is basically tv for the internet youtube is exactly that 
YouTube is TV for the internet. The ads are the commercials that you watch on TV and the video is the actual episode, whatever you want to call it, that you're watching on TV. That's basically what it is. Instagram, YouTube is basically like a virtual magazine. It's you're subscribing to this person, but it's called following. You are um, looking at this feed that's like swiping through pages and it's, it's a virtual magazine. So it's social media. Media is what is harmful to your brain, to your mind. Because what you're seeing now becomes reality in your life. Even if it's fake, you take fake, you make it a reality, now it's your reality. So if you see fake someone robbing a bank, but that seems like a good idea to you because you have a crazy mindset, then now you're gonna go and rob a bank. You took what was fake, what was not illegal, because cops knew it was filming. Cops didn't go to that bank and arrest anybody because it's filming, it's fake. It's a stage, green screen, actors, props, all that. But when you go and do it in real life, you'll have cops there. You'll have real customers, real victims, real uh, hostages, real guns, everything is real. So it's seeking a target audience that is just not all there in the mind, while it's also conditioning other people into fear, into worry, into panic, into living in a bubble, scared, to like, like a, a, a turtle, scared, hiding in your shell instead of popping your head out and being safe, feeling safe. You're terrified. You're going through life, your head like barely even popping out because you're so terrified. The news is, and murder this, oh, and kidnapping this, oh, and this person broke into their house and robbed them, oh, and you're just like terrified of every little thing in life. It's like a, a puppy that's been abused. You ever go to pet a puppy that's been abused? It's shaking, like terrified and scared, and doesn't doesn't know like. The last touch that I felt was abusive. Are you gonna, are you, am I gonna feel that again right now? And then they feel, oh, you're petting me. Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, that actually feels good. Oh, I actually feel love from that. Oh, I actually like that. Then they start wagging their tail and they get comfortable. Not right away, depends how bad the abuse was and how long it was, but you'll see a shift. You'll see a shift of terrified, living in fear and then changing and transforming to comfort, to trusting, to letting go, to popping your head out of your shell because you feel safe. So the reason the government wants you in fear is because they want you to trust in them for your protection. It's like when a child thinks there's a monster under their bed, who do they go to? Their parent. Can you check under my bed? I think there's a monster. I heard something down there. Can you, can you check under my bed? I can't look myself because I'm terrified. Your parent becomes the government because of your fear. But see, when we have salvation through Jesus Christ and the blood he shed on the cross, we have peace of God and we no longer are under the bondage of fear anymore to fear. Uh, the bondage of fear anymore. As scripture says, we're adopted as God's child. So then we're not this terrified puppy that's been abused. Maybe we were abused by the devil. We were abused by our owner previously, but a new owner is showing love. A new owner has adopted us. A new owner takes us out and goes on vacations with us and takes photos of us and, and captures memories together and tells us that they love us and feeds us when they're supposed to and as much as they're supposed to and throw in a little treat here and there and the new owner cares and loves and you can feel that difference and that's the strength that it gives you and you're not this scared puppy anymore that's lived with this terrible owner all their life just living in fear and everyone around you you're terrified of now you're set free you have freedom you're wagging your tail you have your tongue out you're so happy and it's a transformation of the same animal, but with the right owner. 
Dang, that's deep. Ah, oh, man. That's making me tear up. And that's the same concept. The devil was the wrong owner. God is the right owner. And he's adopted you. And he's shown you a love that you didn't even know was possible. You didn't even know existed. The love that Jesus Christ shows you is not a love that anyone can show you, not even your own spouse. You know how they always say, as my mother-in-law told me, grandparents love their grandchildren more than they love their own children. And I'm thinking like, how, how can that be? Like you love your child so much. You gave birth to your child. You can give birth to the grandchild. So it's like, how can you have that connection? He said, it's just a different love. It's a different love that cannot be explained. And that's the same thing with Jesus. It's a love that you can't explain with words. You can only show with actions of wagging your tail and sticking your tongue out. Praise the Lord. So I think that's it for this video. I'm tearing up like crazy right now. That was a really powerful analogy. Terrible. Praise you, Lord. That cut deep. Um, yeah, I, I think that's it. Touched everything that the mind allows. So, have your mind focus on prayer. Have your mind focus on worship music. Have your mind focus on reading God's word. Have your mind focus on promises of God that are waiting for you, that are here for you. Have your mind focus on what is healthy, what is beneficial, what, what gives you strength, what gives you motivation, what gives you courage, boldness, um, hope, peace, joy, happiness. You deserve it all. So if, if you're reading or listening to anything that gives you fear, don't allow it to go into your folder. Reject it. If you're listening to anything that gives you confusion, don't allow it to go in your folder. Reject it. Anything that gives you stress, worry, anxiety, doubt, anger, revenge-seeking, unforgiveness, bitterness, wrath, let it go. Get it out of your life. Don't let it be planted into your folder. Be wise with your decision-making. And think of God. Just like that saying they say, what would Jesus do? They say that because we're not thinking of what would we do. What should we do? What does the world tell us we're supposed to do? What does your neighbor tell you to do? What does your mother tell you to do? Your grandfather tell you to do? Your spouse tell you to do if they're not saved? It's not what do they tell you to do. It's what does Jesus, what would Jesus do? What would the Bible say to do? That's the example we want to follow. We want to be like Christ. We want to be feeding our spirit. What would Jesus do? Feed your spirit. What does the world tell you to do? Feed your flesh. You have to know the difference. Identify the intruder. God bless.